The Unshackled Waves, Episode 37. Hello and welcome to the Unshackled Waves podcast. I'm Tim Wilms and this is our first ever rant show. Now, for the two episode formats that we currently have, I'm always in conversation with someone else. So for the review show, I have an Unshackled contributor discussing the week's events with me, while on the interview show, of course, I always have a special guest. So how the rant show will be different is it will be just me talking on a single topic that has recently been in the news and which I feel like discussing at length, uh, laying down the, the facts and also my take on it. Now, the first topic I would like to focus on is the current turmoil within the Victorian Liberal Party. Now, most of you know I'm from Victoria, so I'm quite familiar with our state, uh, with our state politics. Uh, probably for the past 30 years, the Victorian Liberal Party has been one of the ultimate political soap opera dramas in Australia. Uh, factionalism has dominated the state party during that time with bitter pre-selection fights and alliances formed then falling apart. Uh, it certainly hasn't helped the Liberal Party in Victoria, with oh, ever since the defeat of the Kennett government in 1999, has been in power for just uh, one four-year term. But for those of you who thrive on political theatre, the brawls within the party have been fascinating to observe. Now, Victoria supposedly is the most progressive state in Australia, and this is the explanation for the lack of political success by the Liberal Party. Though most of Australians will be aware by now of the terrible job uh, current Labor Premier Daniel, a Daniel Andrews is doing uh, with the current crime wave uh, sweeping Melbourne, the, the crisis in the youth justice system with riots and escapes, and also, of course, the endless cycle of leftist virtue signalling. But the Victorian Liberal Party is in an internal crisis at the moment, uh, with the Victorian Party president and veteran political operative Michael Kroger being challenged by former Howard government minister Peter Reith. The presidency will be decided at an upcoming Liberal Party state council meeting, which will be on April 1, 2017. The reason Michael Kroger is being challenged is because he has allegedly turned a blind eye to branch stacking by conservatives in the Victorian party and also has also alienated a lot of key Liberal Party donors. Uh, whatever the result, it will have big consequences for how the Liberal Party approaches the 2018 state election, but the question will still remain whether they can uh, finally get their act together and defeat Daniel Andrews, which, as a person who's living under his Victoria, I, cer I certainly hope he can, he can be turfed out by then. Okay, so I'll, to go, I'll go through the details of Michael Kroger's history and how we got to this current situation. So uh, Michael Kroger has been a political operative for, for over 30 years. He, uh, his first term as Liberal Party state president was from 1987 to 1992. Uh, when he was first elected, he was only 30 years old. Uh, during his time, uh, he saw it as his role to basically clean out the, the dead wood within, within Within the federal Victorian Liberal Party. So he's uh, helped uh, many successful pre-selection challenges at the time, which included uh, Peter Costello being pre-selected uh, pre for the seat of Higgins, and also uh, David Kemp, who uh, was also a Howe government minister, uh, winning in, in Goldstein. So that caused uh, a lot of uh, pre-selection bloodbaths at the time and uh, caused a lot of upheaval in the, in the Liberal Party. So uh, he was even uh, doing all this back then. Uh, the rival faction to him was uh, the faction led by uh, eventual Premier Jeff Kennett. Now, the thing to point out here is that the, the factions in Victoria, or the, the factions back then, the Kroger, faction, Kroger Costello faction as it was back then, and the Kennett faction, they, they weren't ideological. They were more based about, upon the, the personalities of the leaders. Now, the Kroger Costello faction had more uh, conservatives behind it, uh, but the Kennett faction was probably more free market ideal, ideal, ideological. So there, there wasn't too much difference between them, but there was a slight one. Now, 
I've observed, I've seen Michael Kroger on uh, as a television commentator for many years. Uh, I basically see him as a person who is basically driven by hatred of the left. I mean, that's what he rages about, about how evil the Labour and the left are. So I don't think that he actually stands for much except opposing what the, what the left do. Uh, he made his name in industrial relations in the dollar sweets dispute back in the 80s uh, when, uh, with, uh, with his friend Peter Costello at the time. So he left the, the presidency in, in 1992, which was the same time when Jeff Kennett was elected Premier. So uh, the, the factionalism within the party, it really came to a head again when uh, Ted Bellew was elected Premier of Victoria in uh, 2010. Basically, Ted Bellew was Jeff Kennett's protege, uh, so uh, he was he was quite he was a moderate within the uh, Victorian Liberal Party, and there was a lot of people aligned with Kroger and Conservatives who wanted to tear Ted Bellew down, uh, which they successfully did. He only lasted uh, two and a half years and was replaced with uh, Dennis Napthine, who was actually of. Uh, uh, more ideologically aligned with Ted Bellew. So the, the Conservatives who tend to side with Kroger didn't actually get the person they, they wanted there. And it was also during this in the early uh, 2010s when the big Cro uh, Kroger-Costello split. Now this was over uh, the pre-selection of Helen Kroger, who is Michael Kroger's ex-wife. She was uh, a senator for for the Liberal Party from 2008 to 2014. Uh, she was pre-selected in the second uh, pos Senate position back in 2007, and Scott Ryan was number three. So when the 2013 federal election came about, uh, 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 Peter Costello was leading the charge to put Scott Ryan number two because he was seen to have uh, the brighter future ahead of him, while sort of Helen Kroger was was just a, a backbencher, didn't really seem like she would have a political future. And so that was the big split there. And Michael Kroger, he on ABC Radio really unloaded on Peter Costello, saying, I'm at his my wits end with him. And basically the result of that was Scott Ryan eventually got the number two position and Helen Kroger was demoted to number three and of course uh, Helen Kroger was knocked off at that election by Ricky Muir of all people um, so that uh, basically Jeff Kennett by that time had stayed out of uh, state liberal politics and with the demise of Ted Bellew it was pretty much the the Kroger Costello faction uh, that was ruling but with that big split there were now two factions now there was the Kroger faction and the Costello faction now, let's fast forward to 2015. That was when uh, Michael Kroger returned for his second stint as Victorian Liberal Party president. So this was after the 2014 Victorian state election, which the uh, mediocre state Liberal Party uh, was defeated by uh, Daniel Andrews' Labor opposition after just one term. So Kroger's big pitch to the Victorian Party was that he would uh, renew, renew the uh, the parliamentary team, like he did uh, when he first came to the presidency in the late 1980s. Uh, also, another significant event that happened during his uh, first year was the uncovering of the fraud committed by the former state director of the Liberal Party, Damien Mantak, who uh, stole $1.5 million of the Liberal Party's money and embezzled it. Now, he's, he was convicted of that and sent to jail. And so Kroger has credited him himself with uncovering the fraud um, because well, when you think about it, I mean... It's pretty difficult for $1.5 million with the paper trails today to just go missing. So, but the thing is though, although he uncovered it, Michael Kroger, he's used it as a stick to beat his political enemies, basically saying the previous guys didn't pick it up, they're not, they're not to be trusted. Um, but the, the more, what's, what's also happened is that he's had a falling out with uh, one of the, the key fundraisers for the Liberal Party, uh, an organisation called the McCormack Foundation, who are now uh, withholding front funds from the Victorian Liberal Party. And it's also, uh, they believe that he's turned a blind eye to alleged branch jacking uh, in the, uh, cons by the Conservative wing of the, the Liberal Party. 
Now, that brings me to my next point, uh, which is there's an emerging power couple in the Victorian Liberal Party, uh, Marcus Bastian and Stephanie Ross. So Marcus Bastian is head of the Goldstein branch, which is the Brighton, Sandringham. Uh, so he, what he, that seat at the moment, Goldstein, is held by Tim Wilson. He campaigned for uh, Tim Wilson's opponent in that pre-selection, which uh, Tim Wilson only won by two votes. So it was a very close uh, contest. Um, but uh, Marcus Bastian, he also had a victory with the Brighton pre-selection, where his preferred candidate, James Newbury, got pre-selection. So Marcus's partner is uh, Stephanie Ross. She, she's a socially conservative activist. Uh, so um, Mark, what Marcus has been doing, he's, he's the numbers person in this relationship. So he's been going to various church congregations and recruiting uh, mem members there at the various churches. And so there's been an inf influx of, of new members into the party, especially young members. And so he certainly believes that the future success of the party uh, relies on energising the conservative base and getting conservatives into politics. Now, a uh, fun fact, I actually went to school with uh, Marcus when he went to uh, the Peninsula School and I actually did debating with him for a while. Um, uh, based on my um, dealings with him, I don't believe that he's a true social conservative and there was a write-up on uh, Marcus and Stephanie in The, the Age uh, about a month ago. And it, it basically confirmed what I believe, that uh, Marcus is just energising the Conservatives because that's where he sees the future of, future of the party is. He actually comes from a well-connected uh, Liberal family. I mean, his father was active in the Liberal Party for, for many years, and he sees himself as the uh, natural successor to Michael Kroger, who's, who turns 60 this year. So he's aligned himself with Michael Kroger and... Uh, also with obviously with the conservatives now i've also met uh stephanie ross a few times during my uh pro-life activism now i believe that she is a genuine social conservative her views are very deeply held she's a a latin mass catholic but the thing is though she's not a charismatic speaker i've heard her speak and i wasn't very impressed by her and we've already seen to to a degree the the mainstream media will eat her alive they'll do hit job after hit job saying how she's extreme abuser abhorrent and so she's uh, based on what i've seen of her she's going to have a difficult time dealing with this media onslaught because they will be quite savage especially with social conservatives now hanging around also the the Institute of Public Affairs crowd for a number of years. I know that the classical liberals in the Liberal Party, they hate her guts. Um, it seems to me that it's because she is a social conservative and pro-life. I mean, for these classical liberals, they think the right to murder children is like the most sacred right ever. ever. So uh, uh, that seems to be where a lot of the, the hatred comes from. But they have told me also that she is a very confrontational person. I mean, she's very passionate when she speaks, um, which is, uh, is different from when I've seen her speak. But then again, I'm not in the Liberal Party, so I don't know how these internal debates go. Now, the allegation is that Marcus signing up all these church uh, groups is a form of branch stacking, and so there's now an investigation into uh, alleged branch stacking, uh, which, uh, which, which is they're going through all the memberships over the past year and knocking people off who they don't think are legitimate. Now, Stephanie Ross, she actually uh, ch uh, challenged uh, for pre-selection for a state seat uh, which is uh, Narrican, which is down near the Latrobe Valley where uh, Hazelwood is closing down. She actually challenged the uh, the sitting member, who uh, Gary Blackwood, who is actually a social conservative. So it's not like she was challenging uh, a bleeding heart lefty here. Um, because there is great opposition to to um, what uh, what Marcus is doing, the state state Liberal Party. Uh, people in the Parliamentary Liberal Party worked against uh, Stephanie and make sure make 
make sure that she lost that uh, pre-section. She lost it pretty badly in the end. It was 121 votes to 76. So that was a significant defeat. And the Brighton pre-selection was the only success that Marcus and Stephanie had uh, during the current pre uh, pre-selection rounds for the 2018 election. Now, I've mentioned that uh, obviously Marcus seems to be what's termed a, a bellwether uh, conservative, which is he seems to believe that uh, the way to attain political power is with, uh, aligning himself with the conservatives. But I've also maintained that Stephanie's uh, socially conservative views are are genuinely held. So there is this, I always have this worry that conservatives... Uh, are being taken for a ride, as they always are. I mean, uh, Michael Kroger, he's always had the social conservatives on his side, yet what, what, what have they actually achieved? I mean, Victoria pretty much has the worst abortion laws in the Western world. I mean, there hasn't been much progress on that front. They just seem to... They, what, what seems to happen is that they, they get all energised by these people like Kroger, and it's like, yes, you know, we're going to defeat the evil leftists and, you know, use their support during elections and their fundraising ability, yet they just get uh, thro thrown, out, thrown under the bus when, when, when it comes to actually doing anything. So it, it seems the, established, the Liberal Party establishment, the, the hacks, they're prepared to use the Conservatives, uh, but just totally disregard doing anything that they want to once they're in power. Now, the, the reason why there's also this opposition to Marcus and Stephanie is because the Liberal Party establishment believes that social conservatism is toxic in Victoria, which I believe is pretty much overblown. I mean, yes, the inner city is uh, le left wing and Labor and the Greens do very well, but if you step out to the, the suburbs, I mean, there's pretty... Uh, socially conservative streak in the suburbs, especially among the uh, ethnic and Asian communities. So let's move on to the current showdown of Michael Kroger versus Peter Reith. Now, Matthew, Matthew Guy, he's come out in support of uh, Peter Reith. He doesn't believe that Kroger and Bastion have his best interests in heart. They believe that they want him to lose their 2018 uh, state election uh, so they can, they can get their people in charge afterwards and then uh, build the party uh, in, their, in their image. So he and his state colleagues have drafted Peter Reith to run. And the state parliamentary team, they've actually set up their own fundraising arm. Normally fundraising is the role of the uh, uh, state, state party apparatus, so this is very unusual. Now Peter Reith's pitch is that he's going to unite the party, end the bad blood from the branch stacking, and focus the party on defeating Daniel Andrews in 2018. Now Kroger is campaigning on the fact that he found the uh, $1.5 million fraud, while his opponent opponents uh, did nothing or uh, were incompetent and didn't notice it. So it's interesting just looking at uh, who's in what, what camp. So in the Kroger camp, there's Kevin Andrews, obviously the most senior social conservative in Victoria, uh, Michael Suka, who was also a conservative, uh, Sarah Henderson, the member for Kerangumite, she's actually a moderate, uh, Alan Tudge, who's a minister in the Turnbull government, and also Josh Frydenberg and Greg Hunt, both cabinet ministers as well. In the Peter Reith camp is uh, Kelly O'Dwyer, because um, she is aligned with uh, Peter Costello, who is also a supporter of Peter Reith. Um, Scott Ryan and Mitch Fifield, uh, bo uh, both cabinet ministers, they are supporting Peter Reith as well. They, are, they were also... Uh, allies of Peter Costello as well, so they went to Costello's side during the Kroger-Costello split. James Patterson is also backing Peter Reith, so is a uh, new MP for Chisholm, Julia Banks. And also interesting, uh, uh, Sophie Mirabella and her husband, Greg Mirabella, they are uh, backing uh, Peter Reith uh, because uh, Greg Mirabella is actually challenging uh, one of Kroger's allies for the vice presidency. and. The reason why I think this has happened is because uh, Sophie Mirabella, in her bid to win back Indi, got no support from the state party for her re-election bid. They pretty much just let Kathy McGowan win that. So I think that, that uh, that's probably the reason why. So as you can see there, there's there's quite uh, there's. There's quite a divide between. It's not just moderates versus conservatives. It's it's 
personalities, which is I've always found fascinating with the Victorian Liberal Party that just because somebody is a moderate, some uh, two people are moderates or two people are conservatives doesn't mean they're necessarily friends. Now, my personal opinion is is that I would back、uh, Peter Reith for the presidency basically because I believe that. He stands for something. I mean, he has an impeccable track record、uh, in government. I mean, he he was he he was in charge of implementing the first round of Howard government industrial relations reform.、Uh, was the minister in charge of the the waterfront dispute in 1998, and really put his、uh, safety and、um, credibility on the line to make sure that we had meaningful reform on the on the waterfront. And he's continued that、uh, activism. Uh, Post politics,、uh, he's on the board of the, the H.R. Nichols Society. It's interesting. This is not the first time that Peter Reith has run for the presidency of, of any presidency of the Liberal Party. He ran, I think it was back in twenty twenty eleven, I think, for the federal presidency of the Liberal Party against Alan Stockdale, and he lost by one vote. And we found out on national television that that one vote was Tony Abbott because he showed his. Uh, ballot to Alan Stockdale,、uh, so that Peter Reith was quite upset about that. But he's he's having a second crack at a presidency role in the Liberal Party. I bet this is only at the state level. But he's he's in his、uh, mid sixties now, so、uh, he could easily just step back. Peter Reith, I mean, he's got his show on、uh, Sky, Beatty and Reith, but no, he wants to wants to come back in and make sure that the Victorian Liberal Party is in、uh, tip top shape. Shape. Now, as I said before, I believe that both Kroger and Bastion, who seem to be aligned,、uh, it seems to be more about power than principle for them. I don't trust them to do the right thing by the Conservatives. I mean,、uh, I mean, yes, it's important to get the Conservatives involved, but I don't believe that Kroger and Bastion, they're They're energising the Conservatives because they want conservative politics themselves. I mean, I mentioned before,、uh, Victoria's abortion laws desperately need to be、uh, repealed, and obviously,、uh, safe schools needs to be repealed as well. It's also interesting to note that、uh, probably the most senior social conservative、uh, in the state Liberal parliamentary team, Bernie Finn, is backing、uh, Peter Reith, and I've got huge respect for for Bernie Finn. He's the、um, Um, chair of the the March for the Babies every year, which leads to,、uh, which aims to help repeal Victoria's abortion law. So he's he's got an impeccable track record、uh, in front of him, and so obviously he is saying that I have this、uh, branch stacking by、uh, Cro- uh, Kroger and Bastion. It's not.、Uh, uh, as noble as it appears to be. I mean, the defence of、uh, Marcus Bastian is that he's bringing a lot of young blood into the party. But the fact that some people are getting knocked off the list because they weren't aware that they signed up is、um, a bit a bit concerning. But yeah, like I said, I I would rather somebody there such as Peter Reith, who's who stands for something and has got a got a track record. I I, I don't want somebody in there who's just Uh, motivated by by hatred of the left or or their own power, so a result will be known in a couple of weeks、uh, from the recording of this podcast. So whatever the result, it'll certainly be one that has political repercussions,、uh, both at the state and federal level. So that's the end of the first ever rant episode. I hope you all enjoyed it, and hope it provided、uh, you all with some insightful analysis. I aim on doing one every week, provided there is a juicy enough topic which I feel like discussing.、Uh, and always, this wouldn't be an unshackled podcast if I didn't have the usual reminders at the end. So don't forget to sign up to our email list at theunshackled.net/slash/subscribe.、Uh, don't forget to consider supporting the website. You can become a patron on Patreon or donate via PayPal. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, or view the video version on YouTube. Don't forget to visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news. Thanks once again for listening, and we'll see you next time. 